Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind the scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Well, yeah, because I can imagine that it is, you know, it's not only your paperwork when you go in. How is that with the pandemic right now? I mean, how is your, your trips and your traveling and what is the paperwork like now? I mean, I can imagine it's, it's fairly harsh to begin with, but now with the pandemic, it's, it's something completely different. Well, we got stuck in uh, the Bahamas, Bahamas, didn't we? To start yeah. with, when the pandemic starts, we were in the Bahamas, in Nassau, and we were trying to get a visa to go to America, uh, because on the boat we need a special visa, B1, B1, B2. We can't just have the normal visa that you get when you go in aircraft. So, and that uh, Simon's visa came true. Mine didn't, because they forgot to ask me about our, my marriage, my, my birth certificate. So we had to go back to the embassy to give that paper and they just uh, welcome us with guns and telling us to leave, completely yeah. to this leave. This is the American embassy. Yeah, it was yeah. really, really... Um, it was quite frightening really and yeah. it was the first time we actually, though we'd heard about the pandemic, this is the first time that there was something which was going to affect us. So we quickly realized we weren't going to be going to Florida, we planned on going there for a month before we uh, left to go to uh, Bermuda and make our way back to Europe. Um, so we kind of went and hid up in uh, the northeastern area of uh, the Bahamas. Mm. And uh, at times it got really quite difficult because the government asked all the boaters to leave, which was fine for the Americans. They've got a, a day trip across from Binami to Florida and they're there. But for us, we're talking about 3000 nautical miles. So we really had to wait for the weather mm. opportunity to come along. And so while we're kind of sitting there, um, we were then told we couldn't go ashore. Uh, that meant we couldn't even go to the beach for a walk or anything. Uh, we couldn't go and get any provisions or gas. And we kind of had to uh, go around the back into little bays and then walk uh, through the streets and hopefully without getting stopped to go to the supermarket and things. Because if we went to the sort of main port, um, the maritime police there would stop us and send us back. So it all started to get really quite tricky. Uh, and, and, and we did really feel that um, they didn't want us there. Do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and they were trying to get rid of us. Eventually, we did make our way to Bermuda. Um, we got uh, put in quarantine in, in Bermuda on arrival for 14 days. But at the end of the 14 days, they didn't actually know what to do with us. So we stayed uh, on the boat until the 19th day. And at that point, we uh, called the British Embassy and said, look, we're kind of like in house arrest here because they told us 14 days. Uh, it's been another four days, uh, uh, another uh, uh, yeah, six okay. days, okay. and they're still not letting us uh, free. And uh, miraculously that afternoon, um, we went for a COVID test and then we were given the all clear and we were allowed to stay in the island. And uh, Bermuda is an absolutely beautiful island if uh, anybody needs, wants to go that way, but it is incredibly expensive, yeah, yeah very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we did have, it did get difficult. Yeah. Um, when we arrived in the Azores, we had to have a COVID test. But by then, it was kind of June, wasn't it? Yeah, it was more organised Everybody already. was getting yes. yeah, more so organised. Organized, so we had, uh, we had a better time regarding yeah. COVID. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, had to wear masks, like here in Portugal. We have to wear masks on the streets, so we had to wear masks in yeah. the shops. We have to disinfect our hands all the time. And uh, there is a curfew between 11 at night at 5 o'clock in the morning and on the weekends from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 5 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. Yeah. So that's the restrictions at the moment, which is not bad. It's no, it's okay. not bad. It's not too bad. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite livable here, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing for liveaboards is how do you maintain your lifestyle? How do you pay for the gas? How do you pay for provisioning? How do you, you know, I'm sure that's something that everybody asks you. Um, you know, if somebody is considering just selling it all up, the fact is that money doesn't really go that far, especially when you're liveaboard. How can people live that lifestyle and continue to make an income? It's quite interesting, actually, because we were trying to analyze this. And uh, we reckon that here in Europe, uh, it costs us around about a thousand euros a month. Um, and that probably includes uh, all our provisioning and um, uh, staying in the marina a little bit and uh, going out for a meal once a week. Um, it certainly doesn't include boat maintenance and it certainly doesn't include insurance. 
Um, but along the way, uh, we've met quite a lot of people that uh, do various different things and they still have a job or whatever. Uh, we haven't, have we? No, we have a, a sailing YouTube channel. Uh, so where we uh, put up uh, once a week uh, a program about our lives. Yeah, so uh, which, we... which obviously you can follow. And, and we do get a little bit of an income from that. And uh, we also offer what we call um, liveaboard experiences. experiences where people can come and stay with us for a week and actually experience what it's like to uh, live on a boat. This isn't talking about like a charter experience. This is actually like a liveaboard experience. So we, we actually show them all the things that we would have to do, uh, whether it's going and getting gas or different types of propane bottles, which gets a massive confusion when you're in some of these places, uh, how to make water, how to check into countries, how to check out countries. So the people actually uh, feel what it's like to um, experience experience living living aboard a boat as opposed to holidaying on the boat and find out whether they think that's a lifestyle that they could actually yeah. uh, before they buy an expensive yeah. boat yeah. 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 that's a brilliant yeah. idea because there's a lot of people out there that you know they have that idea that when they finally retire they're going to sail away into the sunset so showing them you know especially for a week exactly what it's going to be like for real as opposed to that dream sort of concept that a lot of people have is yeah. probably a, a good idea. It is a lot harder uh, lifestyle than you than think. Than you think, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's not just uh, sitting on the beach and getting a suntan and having beers at sundowners. Yeah, we meet a lot of people. We have a lot of sundowners. We have a lot of barbecues on the beach. It's yeah. wonderful. It yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. But it is the hardest part of the job too. You, you spend a lot of time uh, kind of moving to a different anchorage to try and get water or uh, getting gas, propane. And, uh, you know, everybody has a little sack trolley so that they can take their gas bottles or water containers somewhere. And um, generally speaking, it is much harder uh, uh, lifestyle than people probably think um, if you're just thinking about uh, uh, sailing and, uh, you know, just enjoying yourself. It's, it's, there's a lot more to it than that, yeah. Let me ask you, why a catamaran? Uh, well, we were going to buy a monohull, you see, because I'm a monohull man and there's always this thing about monohulls versus catamarans. And um, when we went on a sailing course, because Carla hadn't had any experience and I didn't have a certificate, even though I'd sailed a lot, uh, the instructor said to us, have you considered uh, a catamaran? And I went, oh, no way in the world am I having a catamaran, you know, I'm, I'm a monohull man and that's me. But Carla in, in convinced me to uh, go and have a look at a catamaran down on the south coast of England. Yeah. And that was it. That we was were it. sold. There's no, yeah. way, no way we're going to go back now. No. It's much more space for you to live in because 90% yeah. uh, of the time you're not sailing. You yeah. are uh, living at the anchorage. You're living yeah. in the marina. So it's much more comfortable. It's much more space for you to storage yeah. everything. We brought more, almost everything for, we had from home. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, little things like you no longer need uh, a gimbaled oven and, and hob. You know, we've just got a standard uh, hob like you would have in your kitchen at home, uh, made by Bosch, and uh, we can put the kettle on it. And I can quite honestly say, after 24,000 miles, it hasn't fallen off. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how stable uh, the catamaran is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, generally speaking, uh, I, I describe it as we, we don't sail, we cruise. And that's kind of the difference between uh, monohull sailing and catamaran sailing is that uh, we get the wind behind us to run the beam and then we're just off and we just cruise along and we do our six, seven, eight knots. And um, yeah, you know you're moving, but uh, it's a lot more comfortable and therefore a lot less tiring than uh, sailing a monohull. There are disadvantages. We, 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 we struggle to go to windward. Um, it costs more to service it because you have two engines. It uh, it's probably got more hull uh, space under the water, so you've got more anti-fouling and things yeah. like that to do. Mm. It costs more to have it lifted, it costs more in the marinas. But um, I think uh, it's the right tool for the job, and, and, and that's how I would describe it. I'd probably go back to having a monohull um, if I was going to just uh, be doing a bit of sailing around the Balearics for the summer. But um, this is a fantastic uh, piece of kit to have uh, for this type of cruising. Yeah. So what's next for you guys? What, what do you see yourself? I mean, I, I know the pandemic has sort of thrown <laughs> a bit of a, a wrench into most things uh, that anybody has had planned. But um, if it was an ideal world, what would you be doing in 2021? 
Yeah, it's it's a bit difficult to make plans at the moment, isn't it? Because uh, we don't know how it's going to be, you know, next. We want we would like to go into the med again. Yeah, that's our goal for the beginning of we, the next year. We didn't. We don't feel we spent long enough in the Mediterranean. Yeah, uh, because yeah. we were quite focused on crossing the Atlantic. Yeah. But uh, we don't know. At the moment, uh, Spain is closed, so we can't go uh, and uh, check in in Spain, for example. But um, I think as soon as it's open, we're going to make our way up to to uh, Balearic Islands. We spent a good couple of weeks in a little bay in uh, Ibiza, and uh, we would really like to go back there and spend a couple more weeks there. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, We didn't really do justice to Mallorca, and we only stayed one night in Minorca. So I think we would like to go probably and spend the summer season up there. If we're still on the boat uh, come the autumn, we really quite fancy going down to the Red Sea through the Suez Canal and doing Egypt and uh, along the coast there, uh, where it'd be a little bit more warmer. Yeah, uh, a bit more warmer than here now. (laughs) And we can go diving as well. We actually really miss the diving. We learned to dive when we were in Bonaire uh, during the hurricane season in um, the Caribbean and uh, it would be great to go diving again, yeah. yeah. Well, if people want to follow you, of course, you've got your YouTube channel. Do you have any other social media that people can follow you on? Yes, we have, uh, we are Sailing Ocean Fox on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere you can find us at Sailing Ocean Fox, at Instagram. Yeah, Um, yeah. and Um, we have our website, which is www.sailingoceanfox.com, where you can find the liverboard experience there, it's all detailed, and uh, yeah. Yes, Sailing Ocean Fox, you will find us everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we will make sure to include all of those links below this interview when it airs. Um, Simon and Carla, I thank you ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck coming up soon. You'll have to check in in 2021 and let us know how things are going. Okay, we will. Thank you very much. Yes. (laughs) Once again, you have been listening to Simon and Carla. They are the owners of Sailing Ocean Fox. Uh, as I said, check out the links below, give their views or give their YouTube videos a, a watch. It's bound to be very interesting. I've seen a few. It is definitely interesting. Um, you've been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I have been your host. Please tune in again for another episode.